Thank you, Howard, and uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is a uh, great honor to be here with you, to see old friends and, and meet uh, new friends. Um, so to all of the American Turkish Council members and guests here with us today, I extend a warm and cordial welcome and my deepest appreciation to you for joining us at the 34th uh, Annual Conference on U.S.-Turkey Relations. I am also delighted to be here for my second year as chairman and to experience uh, this wonderful conference again with you. And I'd like to take a moment to appreciate how unique and special uh, this opportunity is for all of us. It affords us the chance to enjoy not only one another's company and to celebrate the enduring qualities that distinguish the U.S.-Turkish bilateral relationship from all others. I know that many of you have traveled from long distances to join us, and all of you are committing significant time and resources in order to make your participation possible. So on behalf of the entire organization, thank you for being with us, and we welcome you to Washington. I'm confident that your participation will be a richly rewarding experience, just as it has for thousands of Turks and Americans that have already joined us during the more than three decades uh, during which this conference has been operational. During the course of the next few days, we'll be hearing from important leaders from both the public and the private sectors in both countries and participating in thoughtful discussions that are certain to advance the bilateral relationship as a whole. We also hope to hear exciting ideas and stories of continued business success that reinforce our commitments to this exceptional partnership. Each year, many months in advance of the conference itself, the ATC debates and agrees upon a theme for the event. This year, we selected the theme, Commercial Diplomacy, Strengthening the Alliance. We believe it highlights the increasing importance that commerce has played during recent years in the evolution of the bilateral relationship. Any discussion about the U.S.-Turkish alliance must begin, in my view, with the affirmation that we are friends, we are allies, and we are partners in the international community. The sentiment is often expressed, but nonetheless deserves to be reiterated with feeling at this annual conference. This past year can best be described as one of profound change, not just change in the U.S. and Turkish national political landscapes, but also significant tangible changes across the Middle East and in North America, and in fact in Europe as well. So we'll certainly focus your attention during these next days on the opportunities that have emerged as a result of these changes. But at the same time, this conference will not ignore nor minimize the challenges that also have arisen. And we will pay special attention to identifying ways in which we can collaborate to confront these challenges together. I'm not going to recap today all that has occurred in our two countries or in our bilateral relationship in the years since this conference last convened, there's too much happening, and it's happening at too fast a pace. But I would like to underline several that are certain to affect our shared future. We've seen a former Prime Minister Erdogan emerge as Turkey's president, and we've officially entered the 2016 election cycle here in Washington, a process that has emerged as our most popular reality TV show. Turkey's geography demands that it play a role in multiple regional conflicts and transformations simultaneously. It is the United States' easternmost ally in Europe. It borders on the Mediterranean, the Middle, the Middle East, and Iran, and serves as a gateway to the Black Sea. And it also perched right above Syria. And while our coordination and cooperation in this country has been far from perfect, we have little choice but to strive harder and work more closely together. I can think of no outcome in Syria that would be acceptable to one and opposed by the other. Turkey has continued to provide support for opposition forces who hope to topple the regime of Bashar al-Assad's long-reigning dictatorship and has borne an increasingly heavy burden for the pain and suffering that he is inflicting on the Syrian people. Nearly two million refugees and hundreds of thousands of internally displaced people in camps along the border have increased political and social tensions, cross-border bombings, and bloodshed. And we are all saddened by the loss of life suffered this year by the Turkish police and security forces at the hands of the PKK. But also remain hopeful that a peaceful solution can eventually be forged by both sides. 
Turkey, by virtue of its location, its political system, its democratic values, continues to be a, one of the critically important members of NATO and a friend of the United States. We are, however, just as importantly allies in trade, investment, and commercial joint ventures. Together, our private sectors provide jobs and revenues that dramatically, dramatically affect the living conditions for Americans and Turks, all for the better. Turkey and the United States are vital to the economic health and financial well-being of one another. Because of where we are and what we stand for, the economic welfare, the national security, the individual freedoms, and democratic rights of one has critical bearing on the other. Economically speaking, both nations are among the fortunate. While our growth over the past year was not all that we would have wished, it was in both cases positive and far better than many of our European and other global partners. During the course of this conference, we will highlight some of the companies that have played a major role in this trajectory from a diverse set of in in industries and sectors. From aerospace and defense to energy and national re natural resources, to food and agriculture, to cyberspace and e-commerce. I'd like to point out that in the geostrategic landscape of the 21st century, CEOs and directors of companies are often called to serve as ambassadors uh, overseas. In other words, the private sector is an important instrument of foreign policy, hence the theme of this, of this conference, commercial diplomacy. Conversely, our diplomatic corps is often called upon to represent the interests and ethos of particular corporations. This is as true for Turkey as it is for the United States and practically every country that operates in the global marketplace. <clears throat> so at this 34th annual conference, I'd, li I'd like to ask you to join me in honoring uh, throughout the conference the tremendous achievements of our public and private sectors this past year and in recognizing the new and dynamic role that we are asking them to play on the world stage. One prominent example of this type of new dynamic leadership is Bruce Andrews, the Deputy Secretary of Commerce, who will conclude the conference on the final day with remarks uh, at the closing breakfast. And we sincerely uh, hope that you will join us for this important event. Commercial diplomacy is also the, the, the theme practiced by our Secretary of Commerce, uh, Penny Prisker, who has uh, really become a star, I think, in the, in the landscape of, of Washington, D.C., and has taken her considerable talents and vision for commercial diplomacy uh, throughout the world. As with previous conferences, this is an opportunity for us to keep pace, to take measure of changes in, in both our nations and to assess what we can do as organizations and individuals to make the future that we are building a brighter one for ourselves and for our following generations. Unlike previous conferences, this year we are enjoying unprecedented support from friends new and old, as well as unprecedented levels of sponsorship from TOBE, ATU, Sierra Nevada Corporation, Raytheon, among others, which has contributed to the effect of making this one of the most successful conferences we've had in recent memory. Later this morning, the distinguished panel will discuss our political landscape. Uh, this panel will uh, treat the details of these and other changes with the understanding, balance, and critical judgment uh, they deserve. Shortly, we will hear from Mr. Wesley Kramer, president of Raytheon Integrated Defense Systems, and their substantial investments in Turkey and what fills him with optimism about the future. And this year is especially exciting because of the diversity of topics that the plenary sessions will cover, many of which have included for the first time. We'll have a couple of sessions that focus on energy and energy security, one on education, one on investment in the African continent, a topic that is particularly relevant this year, as well as a couple on growing food and agribusiness uh, industries. I'm excited that Senator John McCain will join us for lunch today to discuss his perspective on the bilateral relationship from his position as the Senate Chairman of the Armed Services Committee, as well as Leo Zak, who heads the U.S. Trade and Development Agency. This evening, we'll welcome our Ambassador to Turkey, the Honorable John Bass, who was flown here especially for this occasion. And we'll hear from him uh, a detailed and insightful account from the front lines of our bilateral relationship. 
Tomorrow, the Golden Horn Breakfast will feature Tom Donahue, the president of the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, whose U.S. Turkey Business Council serves as an important vehicle for commercial dialogue between our two nations. And lunch will feature General Phil Breedlove, Supreme Allied Commander of NATO and the commander of the uh, U.S. European Command. And tomorrow's evening dinner, we'll hear from our new Vice Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Paul Selva. And on the Wednesday morning closing breakfast, as I mentioned, we have the highly anticipated address from the Deputy Secretary of Commerce, Bruce Andrews. Of course, throughout both days, those of you who are interested in the Defense and Security Affairs Corps will find interesting sessions on security policy, defense cooperation, and defense procurement. So you can see that we have a very uh, full agenda. I'm confident that at every session, you will hear the best and freshest thoughts on a relationship that I am convinced remains among the most important in the world, the U.S.-Turkey relationship. I'm delighted you have chosen to be with us for the full experience. Once again, on behalf of the board of directors of ATC and our corporate members, I wish you a warm welcome. Now it's my great pleasure to introduce to you the president of the Union of Chambers and Commodity Exchanges of Tur Turkey, Rifat Bey. Tobe has been participating in and contributing to the annual conference for many years, since long before my tenure as chairman. They have been one of ATC's staunchest supporters, both in the private sector and with the Turkish government. They represent the en entirety of Turkey's business sector, educa educate the business community, and advocate globally on its behalf. But their activity and productivity isn't confined to private sector issues and concerns. They recently organized and hosted an anti-terrorism pro-peace rally in Ankara. It included 14 other non-governmental organizations and attracted thousands of participants from all over the country. I'm also pleased to report that this event was a tremendous success and was accomplished without any security incidents whatsoever. Truly remarkable occurrence given today's security environment. Rifat Bey is a long and distinguished history with Tobe and has overseen its tremendous growth to represent over 1.5 million companies. In light of this tremendous success, he was selected this year to serve as president of the B20, and I'm confident that he will bring his wealth of experience, leadership, knowledge, and know-how to this event as well. The ATC is privileged to share the annual conference stage with Tobe and with Rifat Bey. Please join me in a warm round of applause for him.